O oh God. Lord, you promise never to leave us, King of glory. We are assured, O oh God, even as we come before you this morning, we know that your presence is with us, O oh God. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us, O oh God. As we come before you, Lord, we just come the way we are, just the way as we are, weak as we are, King of glory, with all the sins that we have committed. We come before you this morning asking for forgiveness, O oh God. May you cleanse us, O oh God, with the precious blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, that as we lift our hands to you, that, Lord, you receive us, O oh God, that you will accept our worship this morning. Thank you, Lord, for this, your children who are gathered here. We thank you, Lord, for your children who are following us online, Lord. Wherever they are, Lord, we pray for your blessing upon all of them. Bless us together as your children. We thank you, Lord, for the worship team. May you anoint them. May you anoint the preacher. May you anoint all the ministers, King of Glory, this morning. And use all of us for your glory. We thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and welcome your neighbor in the presence of God. I don't know how you'll want to do it, but just make your neighbor to feel welcomed and give a smile to someone next to you. Praise the Lord. And the beauty is that we are all gathered before our Father who is in heaven. So let's put our hands together. Clap our hands to the Lord for bringing us together this morning. We are blessed this morning to have the pioneers leading us. Let's welcome them with a hand clap. It's a morning prayer and we'll continue with the order of service. Brothers and sisters, we've come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to receive, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, and to ask his forgiveness of our sins, and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may all give ourselves to his service. And brothers and sisters, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins to Almighty God, He is faithful and just. He will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You may be seated as we continue in the presence of God. Just reflect on your personal life as we continue seeking the face of God. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. May our cries come unto you. May we open our eyes as we all join in that confessional prayer and pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought, word, and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fall. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant us may serve you newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. May the almighty God who forgives all who truly repent have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The collect of the day. Today is the third Sunday after Easter. May we all join in that collect and pray together. Almighty, Almighty God, who shows to them that be in error the light of your truth. To the way of righteousness, grant unto them all that admitted into the fellowship of Christ, the religion, that they may sell those things 
which are contrary and follow all the that are agreeable to the same through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May we all stand up, O oh Lord, open our lips. May Master, glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and forever and ever. Amen. Once again, you're very welcome. We'd like to welcome our brothers and sisters who are following us online. May the Lord bless you. Let's put our hands together as we join the pioneers to welcome the Lord this morning. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just turn to your neighbor and speak a loud hallelujah and to God by looking straight in their eyes. Yes. And tell them that hallelujah belongs to God. It is not unto you. <laughs> Such a greeting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And today, he's saying, I'll never leave you. I'll never leave you, not for second. Yes, give him a hand clap. Give him a mild hand clap. I'll never leave you, not forsake you. And, and as I moved out, when the service started, I, the Spirit of God told me to tell you, there's someone here, you have always been told, think outside the box. You know that statement? They always tell us to think outside the box. But today he says, walk outside the box. To think outside the box means you stay in the box and think out. But he says, walk. Yes, walk, 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 walk. Walk outside the box. And as you walk, you walk through the water, he is with you. Amen. When you walk through the fire, he is with you. When you walk the rivers, they will not overshadow you. Sickness. He overcame it at the cross. I can see you want to clap for God. Confusion. There is someone here who, who is not graduating. He is with you. I'm a testimony like, I just want to like you. The time for graduation, I need to graduate. But I'm standing here as a graduate because I graduate. <laughs> yes, he is with you. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So don't be stuck. I'm sorry, I'm speaking a lot. But don't, 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 don't be stuck in, like the Israelites. The Lord had redeemed them from Egypt, from the land of slavery. Then they meet the Red Sea in the front, and the Egyptians are coming before them, and they tell Moses, Ah, did we tell you to leave us in Egypt? As if someone longs for the slavery where God has redeemed them because they are blessed with the challenge. Tell yourself, I am not the one. Declare it, I'm not the one. For the Lord is with me. Declare, declare, I'm not hearing you. I am not the one. For you are with me. Your Lord and staff comforts me. Siri na chira na wabulante ndereza. Hey! 
business. A BMW, not the small ones. X5, the big one. Who has the final say?
through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned or scorched, nor will the flame kindle upon you. You are precious in my sight and honored, and because I love you, I give men in return for you and peoples in exchange for your life. Fear not.
o'clock service here at St. Francis Chapel Cafe University and I welcome our friends who are worshiping with us online via our social media platforms but also our television audience uh, family TV, Bright TV and we pray that God will bless you as he's blessing us here. May God reach out to you in the comfort of your living rooms and whoever will watch this in the future that the Lord will greatly bless you. And we would like to welcome anyone who is watching with us for the very first time. If you are here, uh, please do raise your hand. You can also indicate it uh, in our church rooms. Uh, but if you are here, please do raise your hand. Good. Uh, would you like to stand? Then people can see you. And in the past, would have given you hugs. Uh, keep standing. I didn't say it, young man. Keep standing. In the past, would have given you hugs. Be pre-COVID, but but I think soon. I think soon we shall start giving hugs. We shall resume. Somebody said soon and very soon. Amen. So now let us welcome them so that they can feel loved and accepted. God bless you and, and find this, make this your home whenever you are available. Please be seated. We thank God for the Pioneer Praise Team for their ministry among us today. They are always a blessing. And one of the praise teams, Bethel Judah, is also ministering at All Saints Cathedral today. Somebody has said the strength of any given church is not measured by its seating capacity. That one we have here. But by its sending capacity. And we can confidently say that St. Francis Chapel is a sending church. And uh, at the end of this semester, we are going to be sending very many mission groups, student mission groups, to all the corners of Uganda, Kisoro, Kigezi, uh, West Nile, Fort Port, all, all those places. And that also makes us relevant as a university to the communities. And so we bless the Lord. Even those of you who are in the diaspora, you are our ambassadors, and please continue to light the light of Christ to the worlds around you. Now, the... Other notices, I'll share them later because we want to redeem some time uh, so that we prioritize the word and we don't lose our audience, especially the television audience. And so I am going to introduce the preacher. But before I do that, like John, the Baptist, I feel unworthy to undo 
or to untie the laces of his shoes. And so may I now humbly welcome the one who can, the Vice Chancellor of Makere University, Professor Barnabas Nawangwe, to introduce the preacher to the congregation. Thank you very much, Reverend Onesimus. Praise God, Church. Uh, let me take this opportunity and start by wishing all our students who are sitting exams success in your exams. I always say you came here to pass and not to fail. So may you all pass your exams. The second thing I want to say is that uh, a lot of good things are happening at Makere University by God's grace. As you are aware, we have started the reconstruction of our iconic building, and we have all the money for that. And I would like to thank God and the government for giving us all that money. But the reason I'm here today, I'm sure what Reverend Onesimus is referring to is to welcome my boss. My boss is the chancellor. I'm just a vice. The chancellor of this great institution, Makerere University. Professor Ezra Suruma. Professor Ezra Suruma is a worthy chancellor of Makere University. And I will tell you why. Let me beat about the bush a little bit. About two weeks ago, I was at State House to witness the signing of an agreement between the government of Uganda and a group of, well, let me say, a, a, a foundation, which is a foundation of Jews in the diaspora. And this particular group of Jews are based in Texas. And they said they want to invest in Uganda. The biggest investment they want to do is to build a teaching hospital at Makere University. We have been dreaming about that since I came to Makere, which is more than 35 years ago. But it still looks like a dream. But now it looks like it is going to be a reality. Now, the president made a joke and said, the Jews are good people. Because can you imagine? The Bri no, he said they are clever people. Can you imagine that the British wanted to bring them to Karamoja here, and now we would be fighting them? Of course, the ambassador of Israel was there, and he just laughed. But so, I, I'm sure many of you don't know that story. You are probably so young, and nobody has
how, how can we eventually get out of poverty? Now, I want to believe that the leading thinker in this direction is Professor Surma. You have heard about the parish development model. It is now up. Everybody has taken it up. Politicians have taken it up. But the parish development model is the brainchild of Professor Surma. We all believe that if we handle the parish development model, we will finally take our people out of poverty. Makere University has accepted to host what we call a lab to brainstorm on how best to implement the parish development model. And we want to thank you, my boss, for accepting Makere's request to host that lab. Because as a university, we must be seen to be concerned about the development of our country, the welfare of our people. And you have given us that opportunity to once again do exactly that. I welcome you to your university, and I'm sure we are all very anxious to listen to you. Welcome, and God bless you all. Praise the Lord. How many are eager? How many are looking forward to hearing what God is saying through such a man, having had a little bit of his resume? And before he comes, let us invite the drama team with the ski to prepare the way for him. God bless you. you so much so much so much I just can't wait to walk down the aisle with you and just but you have to first meet my father of course that's why I came that's why I came today I said your friends know me mm. everyone knows me so let me start the process of meeting your parents but my father is a tough man ah don't worry the love I have for you there is nothing nothing can separate me from you Nothing. Let me tell you the fact. You see, mm. when I look at you, the smiles in my heart just. Oh. <laughs> hey, le, le, even sometimes I say, let me, let me just imagine. Mm -hmm. Every time I say I love you, my shadow even is jealous of me. <laughs> like, like, oh, like they just. You're making me blush. I know. You see, that is how much me I really love you. So. Basically, me, I'm telling you, I am going to be with you. I'm going to stick with you. Come what, come what. I am for you. Till death. Till death do us part. Even in heaven, I'll, I'll tell God. I'll tell, I'll say, God, mm -mm, I, with my baby. With my, telling you. So, hey, da, hey, hey, ah. Where, good mo, good mo, where is your mask? <laughs> Daniel, I have to wear a mask. Hello? Yes. I have seen him. I have seen him. It, it ends today. Today it ends. I am tired of this nonsense. I told you, I have one daughter. I'm very serious about my daughter. Nothing can disturb my daughter. I have seen him, you get those boys, get me those five boys, uh, you, you go to the, to the fene, dig a hole, dig a 13 feet, 13 feet, 13 by 6, 13 by 6, because I am not playing, huh? uh, yes, you dig it very fast, uh, I already have the cavera. I have my cavera. I want to chop him. 
chop him into fossil fuels, pack him into this cavera, push him there. No one will find him. I want no one to find the body, okay? You understand me? Yes. Prepare that panga. Or I just use this hoe? <laughs> I could just use my hoe, but eh, he will die in pain. <laughs> Let me get the... Uh, you see, baby. Yes, uh, baby. Uh, they are. Uh, you. I no, thought you. You. Uh, no, you don't worry. Everything is fine. Mm. We are all okay. Very fine. Your, your. You. Yeah, your. You, you, you wait. He's going to come back and. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, baby. <laughs> Today it must stop. Daddy. Today. What is going on? What, is, what are you doing with a panga, a hoe, and your. You know, you have been that dog that always disturbs you, the yeah. neighbor's dog. Yes, I know. Today I'm going to kill it. Today it doesn't survive. Wait. It is not barking at you, my only daughter. Daddy, all along you are talking about that dog. Eh, hey, yes. Do you dog. know my fiance has just run away thinking you're going to kill him? Eh. Hey. <laughs> that it is not funny. <laughs> it is very funny. <laughs> Are you sure? That is your your what? Yes. <laughs> so you you how do you choose your mate? <laughs> you just see the man and you just go. <laughs> wow. Anyway, now you. <laughs> You are safe. <laughs> you just tell him. In fact, he has chased himself. You don't have to go through drama of chucking him. It is over. So, but why don't you get men? I hear there is a man called Oba. Jesus. My friends keep saying they have a man they know called Jesus. Oba, he doesn't leave people. What? Why don't you go for that one? Yeah? <laughs> Look for him. You okay, want me daddy. To, to arrange the marriage? We can find a way, but for now, let me first go and kill this thing. Okay, let me go and get your breakfast ready. Uh, get my breakfast ready? Yeah. Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, we thank you for this day, O oh Lord. We thank you that you have enabled us to gather in your church. We thank you for your son and for this church of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you for everyone who is here. I pray for them, that you will speak to them, that they will hear, and they will receive your message and obey it. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Once again, I would like to express uh, gratitude and appreciation to Makerel University, uh, to Reverend Anesmas and uh, the clergy for inviting me. I'm sure with the concurrence of the Vice Chancellor. Um, Mr. Vice Chancellor, it's a great privilege to see you. Thank you very much for all that you do. The Vice Chancellor is one who runs the university. I only come when he invites me at the uh, graduation ceremony, which he already has, so I expect to be coming later this month. So. 
although I'm his boss, he's actually my boss. Um, I would like to say that uh, congratulate Reverend Onesimus and Marjorie, I mean Florence, of uh, the wedding of your daughter. We had a wonderful time uh, seeing them off. I never attended uh, a function with so many clergymen, and, and including the Archbishop. I was very blessed to be part of that uh, process. It was a blessed process. I would like to again thank the pioneers who have been with me uh, every time I come to preach they bend their program and come to encourage me and to encourage everyone thank you very much pioneers for the wonderful work that you do it's a privilege to appear before distinguished audience of professors and students and lecturers of Makerere University um, when I was still a small child, my father, who was, let's say they call him catechist at that time, the Archbishop told me they are now referred to as pastors. Um, my father had never been to formal school, but he had learned to read and write and uh, become a church leader. He was what we call Omruka, parish, church parish leader. <clears throat> and he told us uh, one, one of the uh, prayer meetings at home that he had prayed to be as clever as John Bikangaga. General Kangaka was then the leading personality in Kigezi district, as it was then called. And uh, we all looked up to him as the most brilliant man, the cleverest man in the region. And God, our uh, father said, God told him when he prayed that no, he would not make him as bright as or as educated, or whatever the word is, as Bikangaga was, but that one of his children would teach Uganda. <clears throat> so, I'm not saying that to be proud, only to say that my being here is God's work. It is God who has never fulfilled, has fulfilled that promise to a catechist in a village in a long time, a long time ago. Now, the topic for today uh, is the promised presence, I will never leave you. But it is part of the theme for this month, God's hand in affliction. God's hand in affliction. So when I received the title, I found it very difficult. So I went to the dictionary, tried to check out what is affliction, and because uh, some of us are not English speaking, we have to check these words, to see what they really mean. And affliction, the Bible, according to the dictionary, is a cause of persistent pain or distress. 
something that causes agony, suffering, or great pain. State of being afflicted by something that causes suffering, you can think of diseases like cancer, like migraine headaches, you can think of oppression as a form of affliction, injustice, when you see injustice being done against you and sometimes you can't do anything about it. It is unfair, it is unjust and there you are suffering, not knowing where to turn. Slavery, genocide, when we look at the history of man, we see a great deal of affliction. Indeed, when we think of what is often referred to as the human condition, it is not difficult to think or, or to recognize the presence of affliction. So, there is Satan's hand in affliction. In Luke 10, 18, we read that Jesus replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. When I read this, I connected with Revelation 12, 7, which says that there was war in heaven. And Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough. And they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down. That ancient serpent called the devil or Satan. Who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth. And his angels with him. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them, but woe, W-O-E, woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. So, there is Satan here on us. And when I was studying the book of Revelation some year, a few years ago, we received some notes. Every week we get notes on, on, every, on various chapters we are studying that week. And the notes said that Satan has declared war on God. And you and I are the battleground of that war. The war between God and Satan is going on inside you and inside me. We are the battlefield. And when I looked out the word battleground or battlefield, a place defined as a place where a battle is fought, an area of conflict. So we hear, for example, that in Ukraine, hundreds of dead soldiers lay on the battlefield, wounded soldiers being carried off the battlefield. It's a bloody sin. So no wonder we talk of affliction when we look at mankind, when we look at our history, when we look at the history of so many countries, we see affliction. When we look at ourselves, we see affliction. From Ukraine to Somalia to Sudan, 
we see war and a great deal of affliction. We see family conflicts and violence and murder. So we face poverty and we ask, where is God's hand in all this affliction? Indeed, many of us, when we see how bad the situation is, said, but is God really there? How, if God is there, how can such a situation be allowed to exist? So it is in this context that we look at the promise about God's hand in affliction. In the text which was read from Isaiah 43, he says, but now this is what the Lord says, he who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. From the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. In the seven o'clock service, I gave an example of the testimony about my being over the waters. Because sometimes when we read a text like this, we say, but is it real? Or is it just words? And uh, I told the seven o'clock service that when I had just become Minister of Finance, in 2005, I was told that we were required to be in Kalangara Island because the president was going to be there to open a project on, on palm trees production. So we went to Entebbe and took a boat and went to Kalangara. On the way, we were about 25, 30 people on the boat very important people, ministers, and heads of departments, and so on. I noticed a gadget on a raised surface on the, on the, on the boat. It's a big boat. And I asked, is this a compass? Is this, does it show the uh, where we He said, yes, yes, that's, that's what it does. I said, oh, good. We went, we had the ceremony, then... Uh, about five o'clock, he said, oh, we better get back to the boat before it gets dark. So we went in the boat and started moving. And then well, some, someone on the boat said, but are we moving in the right direction? And the captain said, of course, yes, we, we are moving in the right direction. He said, but... Let's ask the fishermen, because they know the, the lake. Let's ask them if this is, we are moving in this direction. And we ask the fishermen, which direction is Entebbe? They said it's this way. Ah, but we are moving the other way. So now I knew that the, what I thought was the compass had a problem. And... Not long after that, after we turned and started heading towards Entebbe, we were told that the fuel was not enough to get us to Entebbe. And they were telling us this, it was getting dark. I could see, I didn't know there were big stones in Lake Victoria, there were rocks in the lake. I'd never seen them before, but I saw them this time. And I wondered what would happen when the night came and we couldn't see where we were going. But not having fuel was a more serious problem. We tried calling various people on the shore 
They said, ah, we can't help you, it's too late. And I remember someone saying that, you go and camp on one of the islands until morning. Ah, which island now? I didn't even see any island around. So I went into the, there was a down a chamber down below. I went there and started praying, seriously praying, because I saw that we were in trouble. And uh, we kept going. Someone promised that they are going to try and deliver fuel. But we did not know at what point, how far we could be going. Then, to cut a long story short, just when the fuel ran out, we saw the rescue boat coming and arriving with the fuel. And we were able to put fuel in, the, in our boat and follow this other new boat. And we got, <laughs> we got on shore at 11 p.m. at night having left Kalangar at five. But we got safely back. So, just illustrating, the Lord had our prayer that when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. Just illustrating that point. Now, the promise, the promise is that I will never leave you nor forsake you. In Deuteronomy 31 6, it reads that be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. That's God talking to the Israelites as they are moving from Egypt to the promised land. And when they arrive at Jordan, before Moses, before, when Joshua has just taken over, we read that no one will be able to stand against you. God is telling Joshua that no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. So we have this promise, and in the New Testament, Jesus, in Matthew 28, 20, says, Go and teach all the nations, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely... I am with you always to the very end of the age. So the promise is there that God will never leave us. From Genesis to Revelation, God confirms the covenant with his people. The covenant relationship with Abraham, with Jacob, all the way to us. When we read in, uh, I think in, in, in the Acts, we see Peter being shown a, ten, a canvas with all kinds of animals. And God said, kill and eat. And Peter says, no, I don't eat such things. And then there's a vision of Cornelius to send for Peter to come. They both have these visions. And in the end, Peter goes to Caesarea where Cornelius is. And he finds a mixture of people, Jews and Gentiles. And the Holy Spirit comes upon the whole crowd, the whole mixture of Jews and non-Jews. And now we know that the Holy Spirit can come even on Gentiles, you and I, and that's why we are here, because the Holy Spirit has come upon us also. So the covenant with, with Jews has also been extended to Gentiles. 
And the covenant is that God will always be with us. But this assumes that there is a relationship. There's a relationship between you and God. If there is no relationship, then it's not possible for him to be present in your life. And how does this relationship come? The relationship comes from receiving God in your life. In 1997, I had a very seriously sick brother, younger brother, and every time I would go to see him, he would be worse than when I saw him the day before. And it was so agonizing and painful. And this one Saturday morning, before I was to go and see him, I prayed. I stood in my bedroom and said a prayer. I said, God, please help me. I can't bear this any longer. It is too painful. And after I said that prayer, I went into the bathroom and there was a Bible on, on the chair, which had been given to me by one of my friends in America, Professor Krabendam. And I opened it and I saw John 5.24. And it reads, very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. John 5.24 Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged but has crossed over from death to life. Do you have a relationship with God? In order to have a relationship with God, you have to believe that He exists. How that happens, I don't know. We are told that faith is a gift of God a gift that is so precious because if you don't have it if you don't receive that gift of believing you don't have a relationship with God so God is not present in your life the promised presence is only possible if you believe if you receive, you have received God. If you've been born again, born of the spirit, and not merely born of the flesh. So this gift of faith, which God gives us, is perhaps the most important gift on us. And my invitation to you today is that you would receive this gift. That you would hear and believe. Jesus says, I truly I tell you, if you hear and believe. When I read these words in that bathroom that day, I saw a lightning in the corner of the, of the room. And something happened to me. And the fear of death that was so hard on me left. And from that day on, I nursed my brother as best I could until he passed away the following month in July. But the grip of fear had left me. Because notice that it says that when you believe, when you hear and believe, 
you have crossed. It doesn't say you will cross from death to life. It says you have crossed. Whoever hears and believes this message has eternal life. He has crossed from death to life. So, the grip of the fear of death. We are told in Hebrews, I think 2.14, that Christ came so that those who all their lives lived as slaves to the fear of death would be set free. In one way or another, in one degree or another, we all as have been or are slaves of the fear of death. But Christ's coming, Christ's presence is to rescue us from this fear, to give us hope. If we believe this message, we have crossed from death to life. We are no longer slaves to the fear of death. And later on, I remember us continued fear. I remember Christ telling me, even in death, I will be with you. So don't be afraid. Even in death, I will be with you. And it reminds me of Gethsemane. When you go to Gethsemane, we have a program, our nation's convocation, we go to, get to Jerusalem, Israel, usually at the end of September and early October for two weeks it's a convocation for all nations and usually there's a walk from Mount Olives down to Gethsemane when you get to Gethsemane it's a very a very humbling experience my wife is not here but she said she'll be at 11 o'clock I have a photograph of her sitting in the church at Gethsemane. And whenever I see that picture, I don't know what to say. It's, it's, it looks like you, but it's not you. There is something about it, about Gethsemane, about our Lord facing death that is so gripping, so hard, affliction. But we know that even in Gethsemane, God's hand was there and it came and strengthened him and he was able to face the cross and to save us forever. <clears throat> even in death, I will be with you. So, the presence of God presumes a relationship. The relationship happens when you recognize him as Lord and Savior, when you become born again. So, the invitation for you to experience the promise is to cross from death to life, it to cross to be saved, to accept the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is life. Again, I gave earlier on an experience I had at Kabaragara a few years back. We were attending a marriage conference. My wife was in America, but I went to attend with the people from Kansanga Deliverance Church, they were the hosts. And I was sitting in, 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 in a conference room with Pastor Charlie Sodonga of Kansanga Deliverance Church. And we were talking beside the wall, near the wall, it's two of us. And suddenly we had an explosion. 
And when we came in, we had passed people who were putting up tents for a marriage uh, ceremony. And when we went to the window to see what had happened, we saw bodies lying on the ground. And they were dead. We were shocked. We moved away. We drove off. And when we were arriving home, my driver, his name is Herbert, he's around, told me that when I was sitting at the war with Pastor Charles Sodonga, he saw a writing above us. And it said John 6, 63. And then the explosion came. I said, really? He said, yes. Well, he didn't know what John 63 says, but when I studied the book of John, I memorized that verse. And it says, Jesus is one talking, he says, the spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. Or other versions say the spirit is life. The flesh is nothing. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, you have life. If you don't have the Holy Spirit in you, you don't have life. Again, I gave at the 7 o'clock service a testimony about what happened to me at the beginning of this year. On the first day of the year, as the going from midnight to the new year, I was attempting to sleep. Then I had somewhat felt like shivers. And I felt myself flying. I flew out of myself, put, to be more specific. And it happened several times, in case you think I was an illusion. It happened three or four times. I, was, I went like a rocket, straight into the sky and out. And I didn't know what was happening. Then it happened again. Then it happened again. Then I saw my body in my village in Kacherere, 500 kilometers from here. And I was at the top of a garden on a hillside. But the body that I saw was like, I wouldn't say drunk, but was just moving, going like this, then like this, then like this. I said, what is this? So, I'm looking at myself. At this body, which I think is of myself, but is empty and aimless and directionless. And I do not know what to think. Well, later on, when I, 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 the following day, I kept wondering, what does this mean? But then I started looking around me at the people who are moving around. I said, are these just the bodies or is there something more than just a body and the people that I'm seeing moving around? And as I reflected on it and prayed and meditated, and as I think about it now, I can't help seeing that some of us have the Holy Spirit in us and directs and informs and empowers and it is life. John 6, 6, 63, the spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. Some of you may be comforted that you have a body. 
But if you have a body and you don't have a purpose and you don't have a direction, what is the use of the body? The body will be here for 10, 20 years, 50 years, 80 years, I don't know how many years the Lord has prescribed for you. And then it will be put in a box and put under the ground and that's the end of the body. But John 5.24 says, if you hear and you believe, you have eternal life. You have crossed. You have crossed from death to life. And I believe that's the message of the church. That's the purpose of our being here. That we come to renew our vows. We come to experience Jesus' presence. We come to experience the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost, the people received power. They received direction. They now started to go out to all the earth that the church is the presence of the Holy Spirit. We are the promised presence. We are here because Jesus is here. We are here, our being here is a testimony to the presence of Jesus. It's a testimony to the promise. I'm with you. And we come to encourage one another and testify to one another. When I give you the testimony, it is not what I have done, but what God has done. So that you are encouraged. So that you... As I said, I'm present here not because of what I have done, but the Lord promised my father that your son will be at Makerere. That's about 50 or maybe 60 years ago. And here I am, the promised presence. It is not what I have done. It's what God has done. So, we experience... The, the point I'm trying to make is that when we say, um, when the promised presence... I'm with you always. It, it seems abstract. So is it real? Or is it, are they just words? But when we testify, we provide evidence of what God has done. God is able to perform miracles, amazing things. I, was in, I told the people at 7 o'clock, I was in an aircraft three years ago, 2019. I was coming back from Washington. And there was so much turbulence. But, you know, I've been flying since 1966. I first took an air, a flight to America in 66. I've been flying ever since. I've flown around the world many times. But that wind... In 2019, on Ethiopian Airlines over the Atlantic, was it lasted too long? You know, every minute of turbulence is like eternity. But when it becomes 10 minutes, 20 minutes, it becomes just unbearable. Because you know that any moment you can go, isn't it? Any moment you know you can go, but when you, any moment, we can ever, even hang. Oh. <laughs> so, I don't know how I happened to be listening to Judith Rabidye, and she said, the call, the she said, call, call upon the name of Jesus. So I said, Jesus! I had been praying already, but she said, call, I said, Jesus! Said the cold I said Jesus three times and the wind stopped. <laughs> it 
the wind stopped. So these things happen. Of course, others would say, oh, it's a coincidence. Well, why didn't the coincidence occur earlier? <laughs> but God's presence it comes in visions, it comes in miraculous works, but above all, I would like, I would wish that we have the eyes and the ears to see God in our everyday life. In Bible study fellowship every week, we have questions, and the first question is, how did you experience God's activity during the past week? How did he provide? How did he answer? How did he restore? How did he guide? How did he comfort? And sometimes I said, well, these questions are so hard. But they are trying to, to probe you and me. Are you experiencing God in your daily life? You, you, you don't, you're not going to wait for a miracle for you to know that God lives with you and in you and for you. Jesus says, remain in me. I think John 15, remain in me and I in you. And apart from me, you can do nothing. Many of you are going around, you are doing your work, you are studying hard for exams, you are saying, but where is God? If there is no God, how come you are, work, you are walking and walking and thinking and seeing and breathing? I believe that one of the important ways of seeing God, the presence of God, is recognizing that apart from him you can do nothing. So that your presence here today is a gift of God. Because there are some who would wish to be here, but they are not. Of course, there are many who would wish to be in Makerere, but that one would never happen. But for you, you are here. And you are of sound mind. There are many who have lost their mind. And you see them when you're moving around. You see them eating from the dustbin. There are many who cannot stand. They can't take themselves to the bathroom because they are too sick. It is one of the hardest experiences when someone cannot move himself to the bathroom. They have to be moved. But you are here. You can move, bring yourself here. You can walk. Don't you see a cause to recognize what God is doing for you and say, thank you, Lord. <laughs> and when you begin to see God's hand in the midst of, because you have a choice, you can see only affliction. You look around you and all you see is affliction. You see the bad people, you see the corruption, you see the injustice, you see the unfairness. You see all the misery around, and there's nothing good. That is easy, and many of us are inclined towards that. But I invite you to also see God's hand in affliction. <laughs> to see God's hand in the fact that you can see See God's hand in the fact that you have a brother or a sister. I don't have any brother or a sister. All I have is God. They are all gone. But I had them, and I thank God that I had them. But maybe some of you still have a brother and a sister, even parents. Thank God for that. You are not naked. Learn to see God in everyday life. Learn to see God's activity in your life. 
And when you begin to have this ability of being grateful, gratitude, you don't even have joy. You begin to see joy. You see some good things. You look at yourself in the middle of a But I don't know that I still look good. Yes, there's something to be grateful for. I'm not as bad as I thought. I'm quite beautiful. I'm, I'm okay. Look, you know, get joy from what God has done and is doing for you. Don't only see the affliction. Because affliction is there. Satan is there. He's real. He's in you. He's fighting to induce you to go and fight and kill. And... But there is also God's hand in this affliction. I am praying for you. I pray for you. I pray for me that we, in the midst of affliction, we were able to see God's hand. And of course, as we pray, as we pray, God answers. As we pray, the promise is, is fulfilled, is realized. As we pray, God answers. He may not answer immediately. My wife was, had COVID-19 June last year, she was in Nakasero Hospital. She was, people were dying. Left, right, and by the way, congratulations on being here. People died. And I prayed, I went on my mat and prayed. And prayed. And God showed me, me as God showed me how dressed in a very colorful dress and, and we were together enjoying ourselves. I said, ah, she's going to live. I said, she's going to live. I got confidence and sure enough, she's alive. She's coming at 11 o'clock. So, I'm not saying that every time you pray, you receive a beautiful husband or wife. But pray, and God answers prayer. Sometimes it will take a long time for the prayers to be answered. I don't know how much time I have left, but in the first service, I talked about the story of Jacob and his problems with his brother Esau and he ran away from Esau and stayed in exile for 20 years and he was in great deal of suffering in exile I have been in exile two times I know how hard it is to be in exile and when he came back finally came back after all the suffering and the misery and he sent a message to his brother that I have come back the message and gifts Esau sent the messengers came back and said your brother has mobilized 400 fighting men to come and meet you 400 fighting men a battalion and Jacob prayed this is when he spent the night wrestling with God and he prayed he said save me oh God from the hand of my brother who is coming to kill women and children. This is a prayer that many of us pray or need to pray. We have a brother, we have a sister, we have a husband, he's a wife, the neighbor. He says, save me, O Lord, from the hand of my neighbor. Save me, O Lord, from the hand of my sister. I said I preached this someone in 2008 in October when no no 2006 I believe or five when we are still fighting the Kony war we have a civil war a civil war is a war brother against brother save me oh God from the hand of my brother 
when Esau reached Jacob, he got off the horse and fell in the arms of Jacob and they started crying with tears of joy. And my brother, my in BSF, I had a friend called uh, Twari. He said, Ezra, what happened? Esau came to kill, but instead he fell into the arms of his brother. I said, I don't know what happened. Later on, as we meditated on this, I realized that it is God who reconciles us. It is God who reconciles us. You may be having a difficulty with your brother. You may be having a difficulty with your sister or your employer or your employee or somebody. There's so much conflict with your brother. Give it to God. Save me, O oh God, from the hand of my brother. And God will answer. God is capable of showing up, of fulfilling his promise, of showing his presence. That is what happened. And it's a lesson for us all to really uh, take seriously. So, as I conclude, we in the church are the presence of God. We are here because of his promised presence. And we come together to encourage one another, to sanctify one another, help sanctify each other. But also to go out and preach the gospel to the ends of the earth as he commanded. And he says, he promises that I am with you. And so, brothers and sisters, the joy of the occasion, of the promised promise, is that what the title was? The promised presence. Is that Jesus is here. Jesus is here. This is the church of God. This is the church of Christ. And, and, and so, because this struggle, is Jesus really there? Is he really present? Our coming here is, is to, 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 to say yes, Jesus is real. Yes, I have accepted him as my Lord and Savior. Yes, the Holy Spirit is in me. Because the Holy Spirit is in me, therefore, his presence is here. And I want to send a message to as many people as I can, because that is his command. Go out to all the nations and preach the gospel. And behold, I am with you always, even to the end. And in the end, he's coming. In Revelation, I believe 21, he said, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will, he will dwell with them. And they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as they are God. God himself will be with us as our God. That's where we are going. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. The affliction will go forever. In the meantime, we are struggling with Satan. But the time is coming when God will dwell among us and Satan will be gone forever. So, with this faith, 
Let us face the affliction. Let us face the difficulties. Let us face the trials with this faith, with this promised presence. God will help us. I have a friend, a Jewish friend. He told me the only two Hebrew words I know, Elohim Gadar, God will help us. So I would like to request the pioneers to come and sing this song that Jesus is here and sing it with them sing it in your heart sing it in your soul that Jesus is here and if he's not here yet with you come forward and receive him come forward and say along with everyone yes Jesus is here he is in me I'm not just a body floating around moving aimlessly I have received the Holy Spirit I know where I am going I have crossed from death to life I have received eternal life come and receive the Spirit of God come and be born again come don't be afraid the only thing to fear is fear itself and that's Satan and sin so have the courage and step forward and receive the Holy Spirit Jesus is here and that's why you are here receive him receive him receive him don't be afraid to receive him he's God and he has promised that he will be with you to the end of time professor is saying you have never received Jesus as Lord and Savior you are struggling in your life sometimes you're facing a crisis of faith this is your time to come and meet with Jesus the one we are singing about and he will fill you with his power he will transform you we don't have a lot of time as we sing please do come and receive that Jesus Come, come from the gallery, from wherever you are. The King who loves me for Thank you, thank you. Let's do it quickly. Let's do it quickly. Do not waste this opportunity. The King of goodness and mercy is here. Thank you, thank you. Let's keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Wherever you are, come and receive Jesus.
Come to the Lord. Come to the Lord. Come to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come to the Lord. Come to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come and receive Jesus. Because he's here. And what an honor to be led to the Lord by the Chancellor of this university and you are a student and he's not conferring degrees but imparting the Spirit of God. to pray for them please uh, professor lift your hands lift your hands and worship the lord whether he has touched you or not the prayer is coming amen 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 Would you like to pray, Professor, for these precious souls? Precious Lord, we are in your presence. You are in us and we are in you. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of salvation. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for these, Lord, whom you have given the gift of salvation, who have crossed from death to life forever bless them O oh lord keep them O oh lord strengthen them O oh lord guide them oh my father guide them O oh great redeemer guide them he said no one can take them from my hand once you are in jesus hand no one can take you out neither life nor death can take you out of his nothing can separate you from his love nothing would ever separate us from his love. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of salvation. Bless them, keep them, glorify them, and let them glorify you through eternity. We thank you, Lord, that you are here in your church. Let your church glorify you forever and ever. Amen.
Amen, amen, amen. Amen. I don't know who you clapped for, but let's clap to the Lord now. <laughs> amen, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, if I were a student uh, who wasn't born again, today I would have given my life to Jesus. There's no way the chancellor of this university can preach such a message. And, and you go back the same. There is no way. And it, it was such a joy. I, I think pictures were being taken in heaven to see the chancellor not conferring degrees this time. He only does that for PhD <laughs> kind of graduates. But touching every head here for the impartation of the Holy Spirit who transforms life. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, where are you from? I'm from South Sudan. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, so nations, nations are, are, are being born again today. And we bless the Lord. So you have received this card. It is yellow. It has no connotation of a political party. Don't worry. Uh, feel it. And as you go out, you will hand it over to Anasha. We will follow you up. Uh, but, but I think you can also come to the tent. There is a tent there. Yes, there is a tent. Let's meet in that tent. Um, the one in the garden is there. And we will pray for you. And uh, we will give you a sense of direction uh, to take from here. God richly bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. This gentleman says uh, he has to say something. Praise God, church. Uh, my name is Boaz Rubega. I sleep in Mitchell Hall. I was supposed to be here at 7 to attend that service, but I've been having issues. I've been having issues, I call them ulcers, but I don't know if it is ulcers. Uh, I, could, I can't leave morning before uh, taking something. I first prepare something before I leave. So I woke up in the morning. I was supposed to be here by 7, but I had to prepare. I ate, I came. I sat, we started the, the service, but also in the process, the pain came back. It has been happening. But today, I don't know, uh, as the professor was preaching, there's where he reached and said, you might be seeing a lot of miser happening, corruption, stealing, a lot of things are happening. And I think I've been that person. I've been focusing on negativities. I always want things to be the way you want. But he said, whatever is happening, always call Jesus to come in. The moment he said that word, the pain that had come disappeared. It, it, it disappeared immediately. It, I think it has been a mental thing. It disappeared. Up to now, I feel Jesus. So, uh, I'm, a, I'm a member of this church. I have not been a committed member. So, I request, if possible, I be recruited, I be around. It, I be around. Because the moment I go back, I must start seeing the negativities and other things. I request I be given a, uh, a responsibility here. I always be around. I serve God. Thank you. What's your name again? Luvega Boaz. I sleep in Mitchell Hall. And of course? I'm doing Bachelor of Environmental Science. Another thing may be... <laughs> I saw a man who has degrees. Is he talking about God? I'm still struggling with a degree. <laughs> and is he speaking what Jesus has done for him? I'm still struggling with a degree as I look, I look on negativities. Why don't I change and I look at Jesus? I bet him. Huh? Up to now, I feel something has been has been changed. I don't feel that pain. I think I should stay around. 
Hallelujah. Well, well, that is uh, Jesus has healed you. Some time back, I had come here. Then after the, that 7 o'clock service, I went for him to pray for me. The challenge, he was rushing, going for next service. He told some gentleman to pray for me. Was he called Frank? I think it was Frank, yes. Frank prayed for me. He gave me his contact that we start praying on the phone. I felt like it was a wastage of time. I didn't follow up that. But today, the professor said something and something has happened. Amen. I will stay around. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's clap to the Lord. Amen, amen. Well, you called on the name of Jesus and he has healed you of the ulcers. Amen. And you will abide in his presence. Even if you leave the church, his presence will not leave you. But as a church, we, we are also recruiting you Yes, you are now a full member, and, uh, and you'll be an usher. You'll, you'll be an usher. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the ushers, you, let, let somebody come here for him. You, you come, the one of the ushers, the, the chief. The chief of the ushers. And... Uh, and after collection, give him the basket to bring it here. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. To God be the glory. Let us now joyfully bring our gifts to God. Amen. Uh, please expedite this uh, because we should be having the next service. I give God a big hand clap and a shout of praise. He moves mountains, he causes walls to fall. You move mountains. He causes walls to fall. Yeah. 
Has made a way for a beggar. Zoom, zoom on him, please, cameras. Is <laughs> May God make a way for you as well. Amen. And God's miracles are instant. Uh, from uh, a, a rat, from a rat, you, you, you Mitchell? Yeah, you are never going to be a rat again. You are now an usher. <laughs> Instant miracle. Instant miracle. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for indeed you are the God of wonders and miracles. For the word and for the demonstration of the power of your word. For the life and testimony of the chancellor of this university. Lord, for uh, the miracle of Rubega you have, that you have healed of ulcers, never to be sick again, and many others who may not even have noticed that they are healed, but time will tell. They look for that pain. It will be no more. And for the other many miracles you have performed, for the salvation of souls, the greatest miracle, glory and honor and power be to your name. And for what we have given this is part of the money you have given us. And we return it to you as tithe and thanksgiving offering. We pray that you would accept it to represent the thanksgiving offering of our hearts. And you have said in your word, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And so bless as many as have given. And Lord, provide for those who are not able to give. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah El Shaddai the all-sufficient God. And to you, beloved, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon our nation, be upon this great university, the Chancellor, the Vice-Chancellor present here, and others. May that blessing be upon, made manifest in this year as we celebrate 100 years of excellence of Makere University. May that blessing be upon you students as you continue to do your exams. And may that blessing bring that presence of God to be your portion on a daily basis, beginning now and always. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. Let's clap to the Lord again for uh, you have now been recruited. You can go and do what the ushers do. <laughs> Let us appreciate the Chancellor of the University for the wonderful ministry, the pioneers for teaming with him and ministering to us, for the drama team, for that masterpiece, and all the ushers, the creative and our production team up there. May God bless you all. And we are praying that you'll have a fruitful week ahead of you. Let us now go out into the world to love and serve the Lord.
Amen. Our session of him, please.